Yo, everybody, hello. My name is Mitch Dodge. I am uh, here with Phantom Sounds and myself to present to you a little tutorial video um, go through of a track that I have out on Music is for Lovers called Back and Forth. It uh, has an old school sample that you might be familiar with as well. Uh, on top of that, a little bit about myself. I am from San Diego, California. I've been doing music most of my life. Uh, originally grew up playing uh, drums, percussion, various instruments, and have been uh, producing music for the greater part of like six years, seven years now. Uh, I have releases on record labels such as Desert Hearts, Box of Cats, Holy Moly, Dirty Bird. Music is for Lovers is the one that this track is actually featured on, which is a uh, record label that I also help um, do a and r for as well as help with our blog and uh we throw events here in san diego uh you can check all that stuff out at musicisforlovers.com hopefully we'll also put a link in there for some of my social media and things as well hope you guys like this tutorial this track's pretty cool uh one of my favorites it's very groovy we're at like 128 bpm uh, shout out Phantom Sounds as well for having me. Uh, very interesting to connect with them and very fortunate to be able to do this for you guys. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy it and let's uh, get into it. All right, cool. So this is a track that I have out on Music is for Lovers called Back and Forth. It's a four to the floor tech house, little house, minimal vibe to it. As you can tell, kind of right from the get go, not a lot going on with this track. Um, a lot of my projects, I try to like less is more um, and actually get the most out of the songs that I'm working with. Usually when I start out with a project, I'll start out with like a kick drum. It's kind of what we got for the kick by itself. This guy here is going to be uh, sample probably had for a while. Favorite folders. I usually kind of stick to the same kicks. Tell you at the bottom, we have a like bass mono on the chain with the main. EQ8 over here is taking off some of that high end. So, I like rattle on there. I also have the uh, ducking here as well. If you take a look around uh, 52 hertz, it's about a negative three gain. Generally to help out with phasing between the bass and the kick drum itself. Usually I've noticed that helps out with uh, mixing down the road as you get through the track more. I usually try to mix right off the bat, right when I start the track. Um, right from the get go. I don't, I don't like to do mix sound later. I find it's much harder to worry about fitting in sound songs and you can be a little bit more creative as you mix as you go. All right, so what we have here too also is a pretty big drum rack, um, but compared to what I've seen other producers use, it's also pretty simple. Uh, a lot of my drums, when I go through them, I usually like to see like natural drums. Like when you when you think about a drummer uh, in like a show or something, usually in my in my opinion, or when I like to listen to drums, it's not really necessary to have like five claps or five hi-hats. You can usually get a lot out of one hi-hat, uh, and usually drummers don't have more than one hi-hat or a pair of hi-hats. So on this guy here, uh, I chopped up, a lot of these are just samples chopped up, and then I'll go in and add my own like accents and effects or uh, variations within the drums themselves. Uh, growing up being a percussionist and a drummer most of my life, I definitely like to go in there and add my own touch and flavor. A lot of these here are going to have a little bit of automation on there from Reverb. Uh, this is native Ableton Reverb. I don't really use a lot of VSTs for doing stuff like this to help on like processing, post-processing. This uh, decay time is pretty low, dry wets, 35%. So it just gives it a little bit more life out of the drum so it's not so dry, uh, especially that's going to help out throughout the entire sound. So like this close hi hat kind of helps with the shuffle of it. It's almost like a shaker, but I kind of have it chopped up as a hat together. <laughs> Got that little shaker down here as well. Pretty low dB on these. These are like negative 15 dB. I don't generally change the volume of the audio track or MIDI track within the master itself. Nowadays, I definitely go into adjusting the gain in the individual waveform. I've noticed that helps out a lot later in like control over your environment, control over your sounds, instead of having to worry about um, decoding through Ableton bit rates. It sounds a little bit more natural too, I've noticed as well, if you adjust your gain levels throughout the waveform in the sample. A lot of samples you get from other companies or uh, just people in general are gonna have a lot of post-processing on them. 
So over the years, I've also come to learn that you generally don't need a lot of processing on samples depending on what you're using. Cool sample right here. You guys are probably familiar with this back and forth sample heavily used over the years. Back, back and forth and forth and forth. This one's gonna have definitely some processing on it, de-esser for a little bit of compression, glue compressor on it as well, delay. Um, Fade. I don't have ping pong on this one, but it is pretty low dry wet. The quarter tones also on this gives it a really nice like riser on pitch, depending on how much I want, how aggressive I want to be on the decay time on that dry wet. Back, back, um, this is the build. Back, back and forth and forth. Dry wet back, for the delay. Back and forth and forth and forth. Dry wet for the quarter tones here back, on that riser. Also got Bahala in here. A little back, reverb. Back and forth and forth and forth. You can see the mix. Back, back and forth and forth on the automation there. Trying to give it that tension. A little bouncy when that drops right there as well. Kickstart I think is most of my side chaining for the bass here. Kickstart is probably one of the more old school plugins that I've used over the years, Nicky Romero. I think there's a Kickstart 2 out as well. You guys can check that out. Super easy to use, super easy to change the waveform of your side chain. Some of the uh, effects that I use too, like the synths in here, kind of have like that talk and uh, talk back. Synth plug here on the drop should be some of the shakers also talk back during that segment as well when this uh, second part comes in bum, 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 bum. Uh, uh. it's not necessarily as um just straightforward of a house track a lot of these more bouncy tracks you do have a lot of things that kind of play with each other and talk to each other and different variations that keep the track moving and interesting um, some of them too I'll bring in, like you can tell here on the intro of the track, some of them I'll kind of bring in to tease in the beginning. For instance, like this synth pluck, um, actually it looks like that one is off, but this one here is definitely one that we bring in on the intro with some of the reverb and then later on the drop. But it's kind of nice to tease those things as well as in your build sections, your riser, the stuff where you're giving more tension. A lot of the techniques that you can use too for like teasing or introing sounds is going into your EQ8 or taking like an auto filter and maybe filtering out the low end or the high end during those crescendo. Some things that I like to do with the bass as well, like on EQ8 here, um, the bass is riding on this part. But we'll go ahead and cut out that whole low end and let it drop right back in on that 49 marker, which that helps with that tension. So if you kind of see a pattern here from like 33 to 49, that's all those tension parts. I personally use, I like to use, I've, I've pretty much always done that kind of build and it's kind of classic tech house in my opinion. Um, you can find that in a lot of my tracks. Uh, the kick drum also, if you take a look, I don't know if it shows very well on the screen, but we do have some of that ducking here as well um, from the kick drum and the sub. Usually some of that ducking with my EQ, I usually like to do that to help out with any kind of phasing during mix downs, uh, especially when you're trying to get bass and kick or low ends to complement each other. You don't really want anything butting heads where they kind of phase and clash to where you don't hear those sounds. So for instance, on this bass right Right here uh, around 80 hertz I have that ducked at uh, negative 6 dB on the kick a little bit lower at around 52 hertz I have it ducking at around 3 dB um, I saw that the the kick was kind of spiking there on that frequency and so what I did is I ducked it a little bit to go ahead and comp complement the uh, bass because that's where the bass and the sub I noticed kind of comes up as well on that part and where the kick is hitting on that mid or that higher frequency, we drop down the bass. And that's gonna help later in the mix sound process. That's gonna help you out uh, as you go down the road in your mixing, uh, especially if you add other sounds like synths and other sounds that are gonna have like more of a low end frequency. Uh, we can go ahead and play that from the middle, hear what it sounds like all together. Got the riser in there too. Kind of give it some texture in the background, super low in volume. Fade out like I was talking about as well. Utility kind of changes. 
is that they're balanced. That synth plug that I was talking about earlier as well, we kind of generally have more uh, texture. Reverb with Valhalla on that point that we do in like the dry stages. And again, that's just gonna help out with like your tension on the track. Um, a lot of my drums going back to the point of using like less is more on the drums. I definitely have the reverb to give it some of that texture and some of that life. But a lot of these two, again, I don't really have a lot of the po a lot of processing on them. The samples are kind of already there and made. But a lot of these hi-hats too, you can go in here and you can really look and see how they are not like necessarily on top of each other. So it should give it some sort of shuffle throughout the track. Um, let me see if I can play that for you guys real quick, just on the drums. This hi-hat and this close hi-hat too, the clap, the snare, I really try to make sure those aren't all sounding like the same sound as well, so they sound like different drums, maybe like it's a drum set. Um, I think that gives a little bit more life throughout the track. Uh, my master chain isn't anything crazy either. Shout out Isotope, Ozone, I'm a big fan. Uh, tonal balance control on here. Usually with tonal balance control, that'll show me uh, my frequencies throughout the entire track. So if I wanna do any post EQ, I can. Usually having it around this like straight line here is where you kind of want to be, I notice. Uh, the low end though, I kind of try to push a little bit more at the top of this uh, edging. Not necessarily like too far, but. Definitely missing some like high mid right there, you can tell. We can go in here and actually change the flat roll so you can see the frequency. Looks like it's around like 2000 Hertz. Ozone 9, usually on my masters. Shout out Ozone 9. A little bit of cue there to try to bring up that mid-range. Vintage limiter, a little bit of compressing, vintage limiter, and then my uh, maximizer to bring out the volume for like negative eight to negative seven LUFS, but it really depends because sometimes if your mix down is really good or you're you're finding you're getting a lot of those sounds shining through your mix down, sometimes you don't even need to measure it at the, like that high of an LUFS volume. I've noticed sometimes tracks my, I've seen mix sounds are done so well that it's like negative 10 LUFS or negative 12, but it sounds like it's already loud. So just be, if you get the sound and if you naturally hear and you're happy with it and you go to car test it or you go to test it on your CDJs, um, I say leave it. There's no big reason to push any kind of like limiter further to try to sh give you a digital number. If it sounds good, I, I would definitely suggest rolling with it. So it's like negative 12. That uh, threshold on the maximizer is not hitting too much. So usually I try to bring it up till it gets like negative one. So um, really helps out a lot later, especially when it comes to testing out trap. If you want to be able to test stuff out, usually uh, you can do even some of this Ozone 9 limiting with the limiter built in Ableton. Um, so that on there as well with gain control, having a, a threshold of cutoff for your ceiling so that way you're not getting any distortion. Big shout out to Phantom Sounds for having me. Make sure you check out their samples, some of the more high quality samples seen before. Um, if you guys want to also, we will have this project downloadable. All you guys gotta do is follow the link from Phantom Sounds. Uh, they're gonna take you through a gate that allows you to download the project. You can rip up the project. You can actually download it. Uh, make sure to reach out to me if you have any more questions. I believe uh, I'm gonna put some links below, uh, contact below as well. Thank you guys so much for having me. Shout out Phantom Sounds for having me as well. I appreciate you guys. Until next time, this is Mitch Dodge. Peace.